There was a party atmosphere at Brasilia's Estadio Mani Garincha prior to the game, with the fans optimistic that they would seal their passage to Germany. Carlos Alberto Pereira's team would have to make do without star player Ronaldinho, who missed out through suspension. Brazil were ahead after only 10 minutes by a Leverkusen defender, Juan, with his second international goal. One nil became two nil ten minutes later. This Pereira side cannot be defensive. Robinho finishing off a wonderful move. The last time these two teams met, the game ended in a draw. A rapis looked unlikely. Adriano putting Brazil 3 0 up. Brazil were overwhelming their opponents. Adriano scored his second moments later. A groin injury ended Ronaldo's game at half-time. He's now failed to score in his last six matches for Brazil. The second half was played at a far more relaxed pace. Brazil content to sit on their lead. Chile managed a few attacks of their own. Adriano had scored three for his club, Inter, last week. He made it two hat-tricks in seven days in injury time. So 5-0 it finished. Forced to qualify, the holders have come through their first test, making their 18th World Cup Finals. They remain the only team in history to have taken part in all of them. Their ninth qualifying group game was played at the Estadio de Porto Menense in the Algarve region of the country. Opponents Luxembourg, still without a point in this World Cup qualifying campaign, were not expected to provide the toughest of tests. Portugal's first chance came from a free kick. Cristiano Ronaldo leaving it to Luis Figo. Luxembourg had lost the corresponding fixture 5-0 at home. They had a chance of their own seven minutes into the game. Scolari's team was soon getting into their stride. Paulessa denied by Luxembourg goalkeeper Mark Oberweiss. Portugal's breakthrough arrived on the half hour. Defender George Andrade with the header. Striker Pauleta was teasing the Luxembourg defence. Luis Figo's return from international retirement has been a popular one. His corner set up the second for the other centre-back, Ricardo Carvalho. Then Pauleta demonstrated control and composure to get his name on the score sheet just before the break. In the second half, the Paris Saint-Germain striker then capitalised on sloppy Luxembourg defending to score his second of the game, his eighth of the qualifiers in all. Figo made his international debut against Luxembourg in 1991. He went close to scoring. The veteran appears more determined than ever in his national shirt.
There were more goals for Portugal. Substitute Simão Sabrosa made it 5-0 with a free kick. And Simão finished off the scoring thanks to an ugly deflection and then an Oberweiss mistake. Tough on Luxembourg. 6-0 to Portugal. Portugal! 50,000 fans packed Glasgow's Hampden Park, hoping that an unlikely win against Italy could reignite Scotland's World Cup qualifying campaign. As expected, Italy had many of the chances early on. Scotland keeper Craig Gordon doing well. Christian Vieri was making his presence felt for Italy. But he too was denied by Gordon. Thirteen minutes into the game as Scotland put together their first real attack. On the end of it was Kenny Miller. Italy pressed forward looking for an equaliser. Vincenzo Iacinta went close with his head. First time Scotland beat Italy in 1965, coach Walter Smith was at the game at Hampden Park as a fan. This time his team went into the second half holding on to a slender lead. Francesco Totti close to a response. Vieri had a great chance to equalise for Italy, but his finish was also poor. Gennaro Gattuso used to ply his trade in Glasgow for Rangers. His wayward shot, typical of the Italy performance. But relief for Italy did arrive 14 minutes from the end. Substitute Fabio Grosso with the finish. Pirlo scored both goals when Italy beat Scotland in Italy and he had the final chance to win this match for the Italians. This was the game that Welsh football fans have been waiting for. World Cup qualification may be a distant dream this time but here was a chance to put one over their neighbours from the east, England. It was the first time the two sides had met in the Principality since 1984. The visiting England side had the first chance. Joe Cole with the header. England were looking for a win to keep their qualification on track. Frank Lampard with a long-range shot. the lone forward in front of a five-man England midfield and he was at the heart of England's best move of the first half half an hour into the game Wales wasted their first clear shot on goal
But the Welsh went close to scoring the opening goal soon after. John Hartson brilliantly denied by Paul Robinson. Frank Lampard then made a typical run into the penalty area. David Beckham was having an influential game in his new role in central midfield. His cross found Joe Cole. Beckham's customary place on the right went to Sean Wright Phillips, given a rare start by England coach Sven Joran Eriksson. Danny Coyne saved, denying him. England finally found the breakthrough on 53 minutes thanks to Joe Cole and the deflection of Danny Davidoff. Another move instigated by Captain Beckham gave Rooney a shooting opportunity. The score stayed at 1-0 to England. The Stade Felix Bollard in the northern city of Lens was the venue for Zidane's competitive return. Claude Makélélé and Lilian Thuram had also returned from retirement. The game against the Faroe Islands started at a frantic pace. Gibril Cissé with two acrobatic efforts on goal. The Liverpool striker had been paired up front alongside Thierry Henry. Having failed with his feet, Cissé then decided to use his head on 13 minutes. There had been bad recent news for Cissé, the theft of his pet parrot, but this was more like it. He played a part in France's second goal, defender Suni Olsen credited with it. France dominated, with Zidane an ever-present figure in midfield. The Pharaohs survived going further behind when the post kept out Willy Sagnol's strike. The ever-ready Cissé ended the first half as he had began it. The Pharaoh's goal under siege. Juventus midfielder Patrick Vieira hasn't scored for his country in nearly three years. hasn't changed. Thierry Henry had scored his 28th international goal in the recent win over the Côte d'Ivoire. His 29th was only inches away. Cissé, though, wasn't finished. His second goal boosting French confidence ahead of their vital qualifier in Dublin against the Republic of Ireland. Zidane was a mere spectator now. Goal difference could play a decisive part in the final group standings. Cissé kept up his search for more right to the very end. But all in all, a satisfying night for coach Raymond Domenech and his returning heroes.